So as promised, I said I'd come back and show you how to make kefir. So first of all, you need some kefir grains. So there's these little things here. Now you can um, probably get them from Binan or any health shop. Um, probably best to get it off somebody who makes kefir themselves because it's really easy to um, increase your grains. So that's that's what they are. And what they are is, uh, they're, they, they're like a SCOBY, they're a form of bacteria in yeast. Now, um, like with all bacteria, bacteria needs moisture, it needs a food source, and it needs, um, and it needs a, 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 an ideal environment to grow in. So, we are going to... Um, create an environment uh, for the kefir to grow in. Now I'm using water that um, is non-chlorinated. Reason being that chlorine kills um, bacteria. We want to encourage this good bacteria to grow. And um, to encourage this bacteria to grow Yeah, to encourage this bacteria to grow, we have a food source, which is sugar or raisins. We've, um, kefir also needs a source of minerals, so that's why we've got our molasses that's got um, calcium, potassium in it. And my little secret is I put a pinch of diatomaceous earth in it, and that's it accessible from Benin. Some people uh, use a pinch of baking soda because uh, kefir doesn't do or supposedly doesn't do well in too, uh, too much of an acidic environment which is why you've got to change your kefir water every couple of days uh, depending on how warm it is. Um, so you'll know it's ready when um, it, oh yes I use raisins as an indicator to know when it's ready because when it's ready it floats they float up to the top so anyway I I've got a couple of um, brews of kefir I can't tell you the exact measurements because um, yeah I've got a couple oh breads ready because I've got a couple of um, batches that I do just a second I will show you my bread see there's the rewana cooking and I've taken one rewana out. Um, so rewana is made from a yeast derived from potato juice, uh, cooked potato juice, and it's um, created a, a bug or a, another form of bacteria which um, creates the fermentation process. Here's my other bread that I cooked earlier. Anyway, back to the kefir. Sorry, somebody will be annoyed that I diverted there. So anyhow, I've tipped my sugar in. I'll put up a recipe um, so that you can see uh, some proper dimen uh, dimensions. Um, yeah, the a, a better ratio to ingredients. I just put a little dollop of blackstrap molasses in. Um, here goes my pinch of diatomaceous earth because our, our brew needs minerals. This has got diatomaceous earth as a source of silica. Um, hasn't killed my bacteria. If anything, it's enhanced the growth. And I've probably got too many granules or grains in there. So I'm mixing to make a brew. Why do I do this? Good for gut health. So quite often our immune systems are, are ravaged by um, you know, antibiotics, the modern diet. It um, consumes the sugar, converts it into fructose. And don't worry about that, that's just a little bit of the molasses at the bottom there. Converts it into fructose. If they need to be fed a lot and very regularly, so probably no more than two days 
when you've got your grains up and running very well. When it's really cold, it may just it may take a little bit longer. So, what I'm going to do is just dip it in there, and that's pretty much it for the next couple of days. Just check it. I've got a piece of ginger in there. It can withstand ginger. And I throw a couple of these in there. And there we go. It should be nice and happy in there. And these little guys will keep growing. And how I know that they will keep growing is that because that some of them will start floating when they grow. And then my um, the level of kefir grains to the jug will come up. Um, so with your kefir, don't go rushing out and drinking a whole lot at once. You do need to accustom yourself to fermented foods. And um, the fermentation or the, the bugs that are in, the beneficial bugs that are in there will... Um, also depend on what sort of uh, bugs you've got in your environment too so and they say that we all used to own bugs but anyway I'm going off on another tangent so yep two days brew it for two days you'll see little bubbles floating up to the top your raisins will start floating ones floating already but I'm just not worrying about that at the moment and then your some of your grains will start float, floating you'll notice there may be a bit of a fizz go, happening um, and then what you do is you bottle it and that's in brew it or ferment it again so you got taking it through a second fermentation on that second fermentation you can add a flavor to it um, ginger's a favorite of mine lemon ginger um, I haven't experimented with any other flavours yet, but uh, my family love it. So yeah, do get yourself acclimatised. Don't drink a whole heap at once. Um, start off small. And when you find that, well I know with my family, demand does not meet the supply. So my brew grows pretty goes pretty fast. Anyway, um, so... Happy brewing. This is water kefir. kefir. Do not confuse it with um, milk kefir, which is different. You can't convert a milk kefir to a water kefir and vice versa. Uh, you can, although, use it for coconut water. So this is my coconut water kefir. I'm just um, in my experimental stage with it at the moment. I see that all these things are floating, but I just want to leave it for one more day. So I started it last night, um, and already it's it's quite pro prolific, my kefir granules. So I'll try it again tomorrow, and probably bottle it tomorrow, and um, I may just recycle my grains um, as I said, these things get really hungry for sugar, they eat all the sugar up, um, and they make probiotics for your tummy. Anyway, happy brewing possums, and uh, look forward to seeing some of your water kefirs. Bye.